This video looks at lag compensation and how this affects the margins. So the earlier videos, 1 to 8, have looked at the definition and computation of margins and also looked at the impact of changing just the compensator gain. Next we want to look at dynamic compensators M of S. So M of S won't just be a scalar gain K, but it'll have some dynamics in it as well. And in particular, this video is going to look at lag compensators. Now as a consequence, you were reminded, look at the Bode diagram videos on lag compensation first, because that will help you with what follows here. So some background. Hereafter, we're going to largely ignore the gain margin, except that we need to check that it's satisfactory. Instead, our design is going to be focused mainly around the phase margins. And we'll tend to do this by just looking at the Bode diagram rather than doing an analytic computation. Now, we're going to use CESA tool and MATLAB for convenience because they allow a significant speed up in the number crunching. Now, you may have to do some paper and pen exams, in which case it's worth doing a few examples by paper and pen, but in the long term it makes a lot more sense to use the computer tools that are available. Now just a reminder, so you can read it quickly, the phase margin is the distance above the minus 180 degree line, that's in the Bode diagram, at the gain crossover frequency. So some background on lag compensators. And again, remind you, look at the Bode diagram series if you need to uh, revise this. So here's a definition of a lag compensator. K times S plus beta A over S plus A, where beta is bigger than 1 and usually less than 10. And what are the key properties of the lag compensator? You'll see the steady state gain is larger than the high frequency gain by a factor of beta. And that's because you've got a beta A here and an A here. So we're going to shift the low frequency up by k beta and the high frequency by k. The phase is zero at both high and low frequencies and the phase is negative near the corner frequencies. And here's your typical bow diagram. And what do you notice? As we said before, you've got a relatively low gain at high frequencies and a high gain at low frequency. So that's the key characteristic of a lag compensator that you're interested in. This gain characteristic where you've kept the gain low at high frequencies and then you try and recover some at high frequencies. The phase characteristic has got this classic negative phase around the corner frequencies. So some properties and we're thinking here about design. We really don't want to modify the phase plot of our system G of S near the critical point. Certainly, given that a lag compensator has got negative phase, um, that could rotate your Nyquist diagram closer to the critical point and therefore make your margins much worse. How do we avoid this? We need the corner frequencies of the lag to be well below the gain crossover frequency and usually people will talk of a factor of 10 of something of that order. So we need to keep this negative phase well away from the gain crossover frequency. Now what are we going to do with the gain characteristic? We're going to use it to reduce the high frequency gain near the gain crossover frequency in order to get good margins. But we also want the gain to be as high as possible elsewhere. However, you should notice the bigger the ratio of the low frequency to high frequency gain, the bigger the phase dip that will come. And so there may be a trade-off. Now, what's the first step of a lag compensator design? In fact, it's equivalent to that of a simple gain design of the previous video, and that's useful to know. So the first step in a lag compensator design is the same as the simple gain design. You find a gain K to achieve a desired phase margin. Now the only difference with a lag compensator hereafter is that you can actually recover some of your gain at low frequency using this gain characteristic. So we're going to demonstrate this next um, and then it will begin to make more sense. Now the recovery of low frequency gain is the ratio of the zero to the pole or that factor beta. But remember 
that the zero has to be a decade below the gain crossover frequency to avoid this phase characteristic. So here's a diagram and we'll go through it one step at a time so it will make sense to you. You notice we've got the gain plot above and the phase plot below. So first, the first part of a simple gain design is to choose K to achieve the desired phase margin. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that here is the desired K. This value here is the K that gives you the phase margin that you want. And next you'll notice we've marked with this vertical line that there's going to be a gain crossover frequency associated to this. So I've just put it down here. But the key thing to notice is this gain crossover frequency line lie. Where does it lie? It lies well to the right of where this gain characteristic is changing and where the phase characteristic is changing. So if I look down here and say what's the phase, you'll see we've got of the order of maybe minus 5 degrees, but no more. Okay, so that's where we want the gain crossover frequency to be when we look at the final lag design. Okay, now you'll see that we've recovered some gain and the amount we've recovered is given here. So here's our gain recovery at low frequency. Right, so that's going to be the difference between the lag compensator and a simple gain design that we can get much higher gain at low frequency and that value is a value that you can choose. And the final thing to notice, just a reminder, is if you look at the corner frequencies for this lag, I couldn't tell you exactly where they were, but they're going to be something around here and here. You know that because this is the geometric mean. Now you'll notice that those corner frequencies are well to the left okay, of the implicit gain crossover frequency. And what we want is for this to be of the order of a decade. And by making this a decade, it means that this phase dip is not going to interfere with our margins. OK, so what are the mechanistic rules for the lag design then? First, specify the desired phase margin. And we've put a note here. This is actually an arbitrary statement, but it's a simple way to start. And next, find the frequency omega where the argument is phase margin minus 180 and choose the gain K to make that the gain crossover frequency. Now, if you look at these first three steps, you see we've blocked them together there. What do you notice? This is, in fact, just the simple gain design which was covered in the previous video. So the first step for a mechanistic lag design is identical to a simple gain design. What comes next? Next, choose the gain recovery you want at low frequency and I'm going to call this gain recovery beta and then you simply use this formula here you'll notice we've got the K which comes from the simple gain design we've got the omega which comes from the simple gain design that's the gain crossover frequency and all we're doing is we're dividing omega by 10 in the numerator and omega by 10 beta in the denominator so a reminder there, note the factor of 10 to ensure that the corner frequencies are a decade away from your gain crossover frequency omega. So here's an example. We're giving you G equals K over S plus 1 to the power 4. And what we want to do is use a phase lag, which gives us a phase margin of 60 degrees, but recovers a factor of 5 gain at low frequency compared to a simple gain design. So step one, you notice, what we're going to do first, we're going to simply do a simple gain design to get our 60 degree phase margin. In other words, we're going to try and find what this K here should be. Now we've drawn the two bow diagrams down here for you. You can see K equals 1 and K equals 1.78. Now the why, why the 1.78? Because if I draw a line across here, Sorry, my line's not perfect, at minus 120 degrees, so that this distance is 60 degrees, then you notice that the gain crossover frequency is given by this vertical line. So if I choose k equal 1.78, then I will get my 60 degree phase margin. And 
what I need to do next is say, well, what's this frequency, omega? What's the gain crossover frequency? Well, you'll see I've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So it's of the order of 0 0.55. That's just scanning it from this Bode diagram. Now we've done it a bit more precisely for you, and you can see the actual value is 0 0.58 radians per second. So I've now got two values. Here they are. K equals 1.78, omega g equals 0 0.58. And that's what you would get from your simple gain design. And you remember, this was the formula for my lag compensator. K, which I've got from here. Omega, which I've got from here. Just go in there. So there's only one thing which I don't know yet, and that's that beta. So we've said we want a gain recovery of a factor of 5. In other words, we want beta to be 5. So if I plug that into the formula, omega g over 10 beta gives me this, 0 0.0116. And so here is my lag compensator. You'll see I've got 1.78. That's the same k as before. 0 0.058. That's omega g over 10 and 0 0.0116 omega g over 10 beta. So let's plug that lag compensator in and see what I get. So the blue line is the original system, just with k equals 1. I've put that there for completeness. The green line is the simple gain design, k equals 1.78. And the red line is with the lag compensator. And we want to see what's the difference between simple gain design and the lag compensator. So first of all, you see the gain crossover frequency marked down here with this vertical line. It's pretty much the same, okay, with both the lag compensator and the simple gain design. But if you look down, you'll notice that there's a slight divergence here between the green line and the red line. So the lag compensator has got a slightly worse phase margin than the simple gain design. But the difference is small, probably of the order of 5 degrees. You'll notice we've recovered a lot of gain at low frequency. If you compare these plots here, then you'll see that the red line is significantly above the green line, so we've got much higher gain at low frequency because we've used the lag compensator. And that was our main reason for using the lag. We wanted to get this gain recovery. You also notice this classic phase dip. You'll see around here the lag compensator gives you a significant phase dip compared to the simple gain design. But because the gain crossover frequency is all the way over here, that phase dip hasn't done us any harm. So we don't need to worry about it. Second example, a bit more quickly. Find a lag compensator to give approximately a 60 degree phase margin for the following system and recover gain by a factor of 4 at low frequency. So step one, as before, is your simple gain design. So we say, where's phase margin minus 180 equal to minus 120? Because that will give us uh, 60 degrees. So in other words, arg g is minus 120. And when we do that, we find the frequency is 0 0.362 radians per second. If we calculate the k required for this to happen, we find that k is 0 0.098. So that was the first step of our lag compensator design. We've got our k, 0 0.098, our crossover frequency, 0.3628. We have our formula for the lag, which is k, s plus omega g over 10 over s plus omega g over 10 beta. And all we're going to do is put this k in here, and this omega g in here, and here. We were given that beta is 4. So I now can substitute that beta in. And if I do that, I get omega g over 10 beta is 0 0.00907. Sorry about the number crunching, but you'll see what's going to happen next. So we could put in a fairly precise compensator. Here it is, 0.098 s plus 0.0363 over s plus 0.0091. However, given that the first step of our lag compensator was somewhat arbitrary, that is, the choice of a 60 degree phase margin, and given we know that small differences don't actually have much impact on closed loop responses. We're probably as well just to call this something like 0.1 over s plus 0.36 over s plus 0.09. And you'll probably find there's minimal difference between the impact of those two compensators. 
So here are the graphs again. So you can see the difference. Here's the gain crossover frequency. All right, you'll see again it's the same for the lag compensator. All right, and the simple gain designer. When I say the same, it's very close to the same. But again, we've got a small loss of phase margin. Okay, you'll see the red diagram is slightly below the green diagram, so the phase margin is probably about five degrees less. Again, we've got significant gain recovery at low frequency. You see that the red line is running well above the green line. In fact, it's beta. Beta is four, so that's the gain recovery that you've got. Again, you see this classic phase dip, but we've managed to keep this at least a decade below the gain crossover frequency, so it doesn't really have a significant impact. So the first step of the mechanistic design is arbitrary, and there's no guarantee that the specific phase margin will result in a good design. So remember that this is a mechanistic design, it's not a guarantee that it will be a good final design. However, a sensible phase margin is likely to give you a compensator that is close, that's the key thing, close to the best that you can do for any reasonable requirements. So you should only need fine tuning thereafter. More formal lag design methods will come later. So a summary of the key attributes, a lag improves margins by reducing the high frequency gain. And what this means is you get a loss of bandwidth. But you will find that low gain tends to mean small inputs and low bandwidth tends to be a safe option. So for systems where safety is paramount, it's a good way to go. What a lag does do is it increases the gain at low frequency by introducing a very slow pole. And thus what you'll find is the closed loop responses will tend to include a very slow mode. OK, so you've got this trade off. You've got this very slow mode in the responses, but you will reduce your steady state offsets. So you've got to decide if that trade off is worth it. Now, final reminder, a lag compensator will not be suitable for systems where a simple gain design cannot give good performance. And hopefully that's obvious because the first part of a lag compensator design is to do a simple gain design to give a reasonable phase margin. So in summary, we've shown how the properties of a lag compensator can be taken advantage of for control design. A lag compensator allows the benefits of a simple gain design to get good margins. And then having done that, you get low frequency gain recovery. All right, so therefore a lag is only useful if there exists a suitable simple gain design to begin with. Otherwise, you haven't got a start point. All right. The lag introduces negative phase, which gives a small loss in phase margin compared to the simple gain design. All right. It's implicit that the corner frequencies must be at least a decade below the gain crossover frequency to avoid the negative phase having a significant impact on the margins.